friends, my name is Niyati Saeed and thanks for watching Edupedia Word videos. My topic for the presentation is two modern system of classification. This is the third section of chapter living world. Okay. Since the dawn of civilization, there have been many attempts to classify living organism. It was done instinctively, not using criteria that were scientific but born out of a need to use organism for our own use. Okay, for food, shelter and clothing. Aristotle was the earliest to attempt a more scientific basis for classification. He, he used simple morphological characters to classify plants into trees, shrubs and herbs. He also divided animals into two groups, those which had red blood and those that did not. Okay. In Linnaeus time, a two kingdom classification of uh, plant and animal kingdom was developed that included all plants and animal respectively. Okay. This system was used till very recently. This system did not distinguish between the eukaryotes and prokaryotes, unicellular and multicellular and photosynthetic that is green algae and non-photosynthetic fungi organisms. Classification of organism into plants and animals was easily done and was easy to understand. But a large number of organisms did not fall into either category. Hence, the two kingdom classification used for a long time was found inadequate. A need was also felt for including beside gross morphology. Other characteristics like cell nature of wall, mode of nutrition, habitat, method of reproduction, evolutionary relationship, etc. Okay? Classification system for living organism have since undergone uh, several changes over time. Though plant and animal kingdom have been a constant under all different systems, the understanding of what groups organisms be included under these kingdoms have been changing. The number and the nature of other kingdoms have also been understood differently by different scientists over time. Okay? So, what were the objective behind two modern system of classification was? What are the six kingdoms in the six kingdom classification? We described each. And second is to list the characteristic that distinguish archibacteria and eubacteria. And third, explain why the protists are grouped together in the sixth kingdom system in spite of having differences that are greater than those between plants and animals. Okay? And explain the principal differences between six kingdom classification and three domain system of classification. What characteristics plants, uh, like plants, animal in the eukaryote domain? Okay. What was the six kingdom classification? Kingdom uh, such as Archibacteria, Eubacteria, Protist, Fungi, Plantae, and Animalia. And cell types were Prokaryote, Prokaryote, Eukaryote, 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 and Eukaryote, respectively. Okay. Now. First is Archibacteria. These bacteria are special since they live in some of the most harsh habitats such as extreme salty areas that is halophiles and hot springs such as thermoacidophiles and marshy areas such as methanogens. Archibacteria they differ from other bacteria in having a different cell wall structure and this feature is responsible for their survival in extreme conditions. Methanogens are present in the gut of several ruminant animals such as cows, buffalo and they are responsible for the production of methane that is a biogas from the dung of these animals. Okay? are autotopic, they produce food by photosynthesis, they include chemosynthetic bacteria, most are heterotropic and many archibacteria they live in harsh environments such as sulfurous, hot springs, very salty lakes and in anaerobic environments such as the intestine of mammals. Okay. Now the kingdom eubacteria. There are thousands of different eubacteria or the true bacteria. 
they are characterized by the presence of rigid cell wall and if motile they have flagellum in it okay the cyanobacteria they are also referred to as blue green algae they have chlorophyll a similar to green plants and are photosynthetic autotrophs the cyanobacteria are unicellular colonial or filamentous okay the colonies uh, are generally surrounded by gelatinous sheet okay they often form blooms in wa polluted water bodies some of these organisms can fix atmospheric nitrogen in specialized cells called heterocysts for example nostoc and anabina azole okay and chemosynthetic autotrophic bacteria oxidize various inorganic substances such as nitrates, nitrites and ammonia and use the released energy for their ATP production. They play a great role in recycling nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, iron and sulfur. Okay. Whereas heterotrophic bacteria are the most abundant in nature, the majority are important decomposers, many of them have significant impact on human affairs. They are helpful in making curd from milk, production of antibodies, fixing uh, nitrogen in legume, roots, etc. Okay? Some are pathogens co that cause damage to human beings, crop, farm, animals and pets. Cholera, typhoid, tetanus, citrus canker are well known diseases which are caused by different bacteria. Okay? Bacteria, they reproduce mainly by the fission. Fission, I have shown you a GIF image in the first section of Living World chapter. Okay? Sometimes under unfavorable condition they produce spores. They also reproduce by the sort of ripple reproduction by adopting a primitive type of DNA transfer from one bacterium to another. Okay? The mycoplasma are the organisms that completely lack a cell wall. They are the smallest living cells known and can survive without oxygen. Many mycoplasma are pathogenic in animals and plants. Okay? Now comes the kingdom protista. Eukaryotes are placed under protista, okay, kingdom protista. But the boundaries of this kingdom are not well defined. What may be a photosynthetic protistin to one biologist may be a plant to another. In, th in this uh, section, uh, we include chirophytes, dinoflagellates, euglenoids, slim moles and protozoans under protista kingdom. Members of the protista are primarily aquatic. This kingdom forms a link with the other dealing with the plants and animals and fungi. Being eukaryotes, the protistian cell body contains a well-defined nucleus and other membrane-bound organelles. Some have flagella or cilia. Protists reproduce asexually and sexually by the process involving cell fusion and zygote formation. Okay? Before Kingdom Fungi, I would uh, have to know about chirophytes. Okay, chirophytes uh, is a member of Protista. Chirophytes, this group includes diatoms, golden algae. They are found in freshwater as well as in marine environments. They are microscopic and float passively in water currents. Most of them are photosynthetic. Okay. I haven't shown uh, its uh, pig, but yeah, I'm explaining here. And the walls of the chirophytes are embedded with the silica and thus the walls are indestructible. Okay. Thus, diatoms have left behind large amount of cell wall deposit in their habitats. This accumulation over billions of years is referred to as diatomaceous earth. Okay. And... Uh, as I have told you that uh, like uh, chirophytes, they have uh, dinoflagellates, which is also a member of Kingdom Protistae. These organisms are mostly marine and photosynthetic. I'm talking about dinoflagellates, okay? They appear yellow, green, brown, blue, and red, depending on the main pigments present in their cell. The cell wall has 
stiff cellulose plates on the outer surface. Most of them have two flagella. One lies longitudinally and other transversely in a furrow between the wall plates. Okay. And apart from uh, dinoflagellates and chirophytes, uh, have euglenoids, which is again a member of Kingdom Protistae. Majority of the euglenoids are freshwater organisms which are found in stagnant water. Instead of a cell wall, they have a protein rich layer called pellicle which makes their body very flexible. They have two flagella, a short and the long one. Though they are photosynthetic in the presence of sunlight, when deprived of sunlight, they behave like heterotrophs by predating on other smaller organisms. Interestingly, the pigment of euglenoids are identical to those present in higher plants. Okay? And now, apart from euglenoids, dinoflagellates and chirophytes, they have, protesta, have another member known as slim molds. Slim molds are saprophytic protists. The body moves along the decaying twigs and leaves engulfing organic material. Under suitable condition, they form an aggregation called plasmodium, which may grow and spread over several feet. Okay? And during unfavorable conditions, the plasmodium differentiates and forms fruiting bodies bearing spores at their tips. The spores possess true walls. They are extremely resistant and survive for many years even under adverse condition. Okay? And the spores are dispersed by air currents. Now comes the kingdom fungi. Fungi are eukaryotes and most are multicellular in nature. Okay? They constitute a unique kingdom of heterotropic organism they show a great diversity in morphology and habitat okay when your bread develops a mold or your orange rods it is because of fungi the common mushroom you eat and the toad stools are also fungi a white spots that are seen on mustard leaves are due to the parasitic fungus some unicellular fungi for example yeast are used to make bread and beer other fungi, they cause disease in plants and animals. Wheat rust causing puccinia is an important example of it. Some are the source of antibiotics, for example, pen penicillin. Okay? Fungi are cosmopolitan, that means they are found everywhere and occur in air, water, soil and on animals and plants. Okay? They prefer to grow in warm and humid places. Have you ever wondered why we keep food in the refrigerator? Yes, it is to prevent food from going bad due to bacterial or fungal infection. Okay? With the exception of yeast, which are unicellular, fungi are filamentous. Their body consists of a long, slender, thread-like structure called hyphae. Okay? The network of the hyphae is known as mycelium. Okay? Some hyphae are continuous tubes filled with multinucleated cytoplasm. These are called cenocytic hyphae. Others have septae or the cross walls in their hyphae. The cell wall of fungi are composed of chitin and polysaccharide. Most fungi are heterotypic and absorb soluble organic matter from dead substrates and hence are called as saprophytes. Those that depend on living plants and animals are called parasites. They can also live as symbionts, which is in association with algae as lichens and with the roots of the higher plants as mycorrhiza. Okay? Now comes the kingdom plantae. Kingdom plantae plants are eukaryotes, multicellular, and they carry out photosynthesis. We very well know that. Okay. The cells of the plant have cell walls, undoubtedly, which is a distinguishing feature of it, and they contain polysaccharide cellulose. Okay. They directly or indirectly depend on plants for food. Who? Kingdom Animalia. Okay. 
plant cells are specialized for different functions such as photosynthesis the transport of material and support okay and kingdom plantae include mosses ferns corn bearing uh, plants and which are also known as gymnosperms okay and flowering plants uh, which are also known as angiosperms okay this is the plant kingdom they are divided into two that is non flowering and flowering plants uh, flowering are known as kleptogamia and the flowering are known as phanerogamia kleptogamia they are divided into three such as thallophyta bryophyta teratophyta okay and the phanerogamia they are divided into two which is uh, gymnosperms and angiosperms okay and uh, again uh, thallophyta of cryptogamia is divided into four such as bacteria algae fungi and lichens okay following are the few distinguishing characters of plants in general plant vary greatly in form and size the body is usually asymmetrical the higher forms of plant structure like leaves and plants they have a definite form and shape okay plants are fixed with root in the soil and they are not capable of motion certain localized movements many occur in plants plants grow throughout their life span nutrition in plant is usually autotrophic and saprophytic minerals in solution state are absorbed particulate matters cannot be absorbed by the roots and the body of the plant is composed of cells and the all cells of the plant body have a distinct cell wall the cells have a vacuole filled with sap and the plastid of different kinds the plant cells do not have centriole or the lysosome plants have reserve food as a starch this matter i have extracted from a tutor visitor okay now the kingdom animalia kingdom animalia animalia are multicellular eukaryotes and heterotypic in nature okay this kingdom is characterized by heterotypic uh, eukaryotic um, organism that are multicellular and their cell lack cell walls they directly or indirectly depend on the plants for food okay they digest their food in an internal cavity and store food reserve as a glycogen or fat and their mode of nutrition is holozoic by ingestion of food they follow a definite growth pattern and grow into adults that have definite shape and size higher form shows elaborate sensory and neuromotor mechanism most of them are capable of locomotion okay a uh, kingdom animalia uh, includes sponges jellyfishes worms seals and insects okay kingdom animalia is divided into two section unicellular and multicellular unicellular animals have an example of protozoa and multicellular animal is metazoa metazoa is again divided into two invertebrates and vertebrates invertebrates have uh, such as sponges cylindrates worms arthropods molluscans echinoderms and the vertebrates such as fishes amphibian reptiles birds and mammals we have already studied in detail invertebrates and vertebrates following are the few distinguishing characters of animals in general body of animals exhibit a definite symmetry form a shape and size animals can move from place to place body growth in animal is determined and it occurs proportionately in all body parts animals they possess a capacity to respond to stimulus animal body is also made up of cells the cells which do not have cell wall which is a distinguishing feature of plants the cells do not contain plastids and vacuoles centrosomes and lysosomes are present which are the characteristic feature of animal cell animal cell cannot synthesize some necessary am amino acids vitamins and coenzymes on their own they are to be obtained from external sources reserve food is in the form of glycogen as seen in animal cell okay 
Now, what are the merits and the demerits of two kingdom classification? The two kingdom classification was in use for a long period of time as more information came into picture about uh, various groups of plants and organisms, the system was found to be inadequate. What were the merits? Organisms were classified into plant ki and animal kingdom based on their specific characters. Second, this system initiated systematic method to classify living organisms. Now, what were the demerits? The two kingdom system of classification was not suitable as due to large diversity of among organisms. Okay. Now, the three domain system. Okay. Bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. Six kingdom classification are bacteria, archaea, protists, plantae, fungi, and animalia. And the traditional five kingdom classification were monera, protists, plantae, fungi, and animalia. Okay. Living things fall into three broad it's called domain. This is a three domain system. Domain archaea, domain bacteria, and domain eukarya. Eukarya means eukaryotes, which have true nuclei with linear chromosomes and membrane bound organelles okay this includes protista uh, plants fungi and animalia okay justify why many scientists group viruses in a category separate from living things Viruses have no nucleus, cytoplasm, organelles, or cell membrane, so cannot carry out cellular function. Okay, only they are only able to replicate by infecting cells and using the organelles and enzyme within it. They are very small. Their size ranges from 20 nanometer to 250 nanometer. They consist of two parts: a nucleic acid and a protein called called capsid. Nucleic acid may be DNA or RNA, but not both. Okay, and some viruses have a membrane like structure outside the capsid called as envelope. Okay, these are the examples of viruses the flu virus and the HIV virus. They have capsid, which is a proteinaceous in nature and are determined by the genes in the viruses. They have RNA as a genetic material, they have envelope, and they have projections. As you can see, these are the projections. These are the examples of the viruses, that is TMV, that is uh, tobacco mosaic virus, polio virus, and the bacteria phage. Uh, you can say the virus that attacks a bacteria is known as bacteria phage, okay? Bacteria phage that attacks E. coli. How a virus invades a cell? First, it attaches a um, host cell, and second, injection of the viral DNA or RNA. Integration of the viral DNA into human genome and multiplication of the host cell with the viral DNA. This is the lysogenic cycle of the temperate bacteriophage. Okay. HIV, it is a retrovirus. HIV attacks to the cell surface. Virus core is a vehicle and its RNA is converted into DNA. Okay, that is, this is known as reverse transcription. Third, viral DNA enters nucleus and combines with the host cell DNA. And the RNA copies of the viruses are made. And the assembled viral particles leave the cell through lysis or budding. Okay. This is the simplified HIV life cycle that virus attacks to the cell surface, virus core enters cells and its RNA is converted to DNA. Uh, this is the cell nucleus, okay, and the virus DNA enters nuclear, uh, nucleus and combines with the host cell DNA and then RNA copies are made uh, which leave the nucleus. Okay, and uh, these are the new viral proteins uh, through which translation, uh, by which translation um, proteins are formed. And new viral components co-aggregate at cell surface and new cell uh, virus particle bursts from the um, ultimately. Okay, this is the HIV that invades a white blood cell that is WBC, which is a fighter of human cell. Viral diseases uh, such as chicken paws, uh, measles, rubella, mumps, influenza, smallpox, infectious hepatitis, polio, yellow fever, and AIDS are the commonly uh, 
uh, viral diseases that are seen and they are transmitted by air currents, uh, food, mosquitoes, through sexual contact, uh, through contaminated uh, needles and syringes and symptoms are written respectively. This is a herpes virus okay, that causes inflammation in the human body when it attacks the human cell of course. So this comes to an end. Thank you and stay tuned.